The California is a different kind of Ferrari, but not too different. Softer and more approachable, certainly, thanks to a clever gearbox and well-judged suspension, but still frantically quick and superbly responsive. The folding hardtop roof is neat, the 4.3-litre V8 glorious, the fit and finish everything you would expect. It is, in short, the perfect entry point for a unique brand. Ferrari is a hardcore brand, a purveyor of cars for which only serious drivers needed to apply, or at least those who wanted others to think they were. But even Ferrari isn't recession-proof. To survive in the modern era, Maranello also needed to offer a car uh, that was more accessible, if not in price, then certainly in the way that its performance could be tamed. A real Ferrari, certainly, but one not necessarily requiring Schumacher skills to master. And this is it, the California. Named after the Italian marks now almost priceless 250 GT California of the late 1950s, this is a landmark car in almost every way. The first Ferrari to feature its V8 in front of the cabin rather than behind it. The first with more efficient direct injection. The first to use a uh, sequential double clutch semi-automatic gearbox. And perhaps most noticeably, the first with that most noticeable of modern sports car trendy features, a folding aluminium hardtop roof. It's a crowd-pleasing package guaranteed to go down well in the US, but does it dilute the very formula that makes a Ferrari what it is? That's what we're here to find out. Settle into the beautifully finished cockpit, and it certainly feels like a real Ferrari, an impression underlined by the glorious flare of power released by pressing the big red button on the steering wheel. Now, it's a V8 that beats in front of you, of course, a 4.3-litre unit borrowed from the old F430, but improved here by the addition of direct fuel injection. It's not quite as insanely fast as a 458 Italia, but then that car has 570 brake horsepower. Here, uh, a mere 453 brake horses is quite sufficient. After all, if you need to get from rest to 62 miles an hour quicker than 3.9 seconds, or from rest to 100 miles an hour faster than the 9 seconds needed here, then I'd suggest that you really need a super bike rather than a super car. Flat out, 193 miles an hour beckons if you've a test track, an empty autobahn, or a very good lawyer. That the engineers have achieved this level of performance uh, despite the extra weight that comes with the metal folding roof is impressive. This, after all, is a car that weighs more than the larger Ferrari 599. But uh, perhaps one reason why lies in the fact that the roof mechanism isn't actually that heavy, weighing less than the soft top arrangement used on the old uh, F430 Spider. But is this car more accessible, more usable, as Ferrari promise? Well, judge for yourself. Let's start with the suspension, a multi-link arrangement which replaces the usual hard, lumpy ride you get on a supercar with a slightly but significantly more comfort-orientated arrangement. And you can improve it further by paying extra for the optional Magna Ride adjustable damping system, uh, which gives you comfort and sport settings. But most owners will probably find the fixed damping setup just fine. By the way, you could certainly travel long distances in this car. The other main feature that makes this car so much more day-to-day -day user-friendly than any other Ferrari I've driven is this optional 7-speed dual-clutch sequential semi-automatic gearbox with its wheel-mounted paddle shifters. This, one of the new breed of dual-clutch transmissions that pre-selects the next gear before you finish with the last one. Are offering super smooth, lightning quick gear changes. Now, prior to this transmission, the closest any Ferrari had got to an automatic was the clunky F1 style automated manual box that's been now well and truly superseded. Almost all California customers opt for this uh, transmission rather than the standard six speed manual gearbox, and you can see why. 
almost anyone can get in if the car's equipped with the uh, dual clutch transmission and drive it hard using the launch control accessible via this button here to duplicate the performance figures of the most experienced Maranello test driver. You can make the shift times even faster by flicking this little manatino knob on the steering wheel from comfort to sport, which as well as adjusting uh, the stability and traction control systems, simultaneously tweaks the accelerator response. Leave it so set and you'll have plenty of use for the F1 track traction control system and the big Brembo brakes with their standard ceramic discs. You may even want to uh, disengage the CST stability control system if you're on track and let the rear end hang out a bit. And refinement? Well, this is, of course, one of those cars where you want a bit of noise, and the California duly delivers the full surround sound bellow when you let rip. As well as being able to cruise quietly when all you want to do is listen to Mantovani on the stereo. As for wind noise, there's impressively little buffeting when you're traveling roof down, although there is a, a bit of road noise, tire noise on coarser surfaces. There's a lot going on with the California from a styling perspective, disguising a body and chassis, both fashioned from pure aluminium. At the front, there's a slim bonnet scoop and a wide grille with the prancing horse at its center. As you move to the side, attention switches to this vent behind the front wheel arch from which an indentation sweeps back along the car's haunches, rising over the door release en route. As for the rear, well, it's rather less successful thanks to the awkwardness of these stacked exhaust pipes so styled to improve the airflow. Overall, you may not feel it to be one of the most beautiful Ferrari shapes, I certainly don't, but there's no denying that all those louves, grooves and curves have all been very cleverly used to hide the bulk of that retracting two-piece metal folding roof that takes just 14 seconds to perform its electro-hydraulic acrobatics. At the wheel, it's all beautifully fashioned, the days being long gone when Marinello machines featured Fiat switchgear and cheap plastics. Only the Chrysler shared sat-nav system seems in any way out of place on a £150,000 car. These days, Ferraris adapt themselves to their owners rather than the other way round, so you get two-way electric steering adjustment and a multi-adjustable electric seat. Visibility is very good, save perhaps for an unswept area just uh, by the passenger A-pillar. And the layout of everything and the controls, it's all pretty much faultless, although I could probably do without the electronic parking brake. The Italian brand describes the California as a plus two, a reference to the fact that this area behind the front seats can play host either, as here, to a couple of occasional rear chairs, or an optional luggage shelf. Now either way, if you need more space, you can fold down these two flaps to allow longer items to poke through from the boot and increase the boot space from 240 to 340 litres. This is Ferrari's fourth model line, and though it's the most affordable, it comes at a proper Ferrari size price. The list figure is around the £145,000 mark, about £25,000 less than a fixed top 458 Italia. But uh, many owners make up much of that difference by dipping into the huge and expensive options catalogue. So what else could you have for this kind of cash? Well, the only other similarly powered and priced alternative with a fixed uh, metal folding roof is Mercedes SL65 AMG which is uh, 12,000 pounds more, uh, slightly slower and a lot less focused. Perhaps closer in concept to two soft top uh, supercars, Lamborghini's Gallardo Spider, which is 13,000 pounds more, uh, but no faster despite its extra 100 brake horsepower, and Porsche's 911 Turbo S Cabriolet, which is 13,000 pounds less, just as fast, but crucially not a Ferrari, which to most California buyers, will matter terribly. Almost all California customers will find a little extra to specify the seven-speed dual-clutch semi-automatic sequential gearbox that uh, I've got here. Apart from that, the sky's the limit with the options list. 
at least leather trim, satellite navigation, parking sensors, a vehicle tracking system, the decent quality stereo, metallic paint and gorgeous alloy wheels are all standard, as well as the airbags, the retractable roll bar and the various electronic safety systems that a car like this should have by right. Ferrari has pledged to cut the CO2 output of its cars by 40% over the next few years and sure enough the California's CO2 figure, though still considerable at 299 grams per kilometre, is a little lower than some of its rivals. The same applies to the 21.5 miles to the gallon combined fuel consumption figure, though uh, unless you drive like a saint, you'll be lucky to get more than around 260 miles out of the 17 gallon tank. At least residual values should be strong, provided you adhere strictly to the servicing schedules. Replacement parts, though, will be uh, pricey. Uh, you'll need to budget for tyres if you drive this car enthusiastically on a regular basis. And I don't even want to think about how uh, much those ceramic brake discs would cost to replace. Happily, though, most typical Ferrari California buyers won't give two hoots. But for the few that do, there's the peace of mind of a four-year warranty. I am, to be honest, a little irritated by the so-called purists, usually pimply-faced road test writers, who question whether this is a real Ferrari. All it lacks are the track-orientated excesses that most buyers don't want in the first place. It's as well to remember that most who can afford a car like this are unlikely to be able to drive it properly on the limit. To my mind, it's well overdue for Marinello to be bringing them a car they can get a bit more from, and this is it. Yet it's also so much more than that. Here's a car that proves Ferrari quite able to take all the technology used by its rivals and do it better. Here's a brand no longer just trading on its heritage, no longer selling only to billionaires with private test tracks. The California proves all this while at the same time funding the development of the kind of focus performance cars that schoolboy Ferrari fans can stick on their bedroom walls. Everyone's a winner. <laughs>